Hello champions, good morning, happy Wednesday, welcome to day 30, I am so excited, today's topic is on making money welcome, so basically money mindset, before I jump into the conversation for today, I would like to introduce myself to those that may be new to the brand, excuse me, <coughs> my name is Amatola the Great, I am the lead consultant here at the Funding Magnet, where we are here to propel, prepare you to fully fund your budget or your mission or your vision as an organization. We believe that you don't have to go broke to make a difference and that you can make a living while you're making a difference as well. We're here to cheer you on, to help you to be the best you can be when it comes to running your non-profit and we believe that you can run a profitable and sustainable organization and so this series started as a result of people asking me questions about how do i fund my non-profit how do i grow my non-profit how do i expand and ensure that i can create a lasting organization that really helps and really make a difference in the world and so today is day 30 and i'm so proud of all of you and myself for making it this far and so tomorrow is going to be the last day in the series but i hope that you found it helpful if you've not watched the past ones please go back on my grid and definitely catch it as well but now let's jump into the conversation of today i really like talking about money so that's a good thing and so uh, let's get let's get started so back to the conversation for today make money welcome and so i know that tied to my sound word like what do you mean by make money welcome so as a change maker as a champion for good the truth of the matter is that whatever we do we need funding that is just the truth you, we need money to expand that impact to be able to save life change life and transform community you need funding to start your organization you need funding to fuel it so again think of funding as the engine if you have a house if, if you have a car and without the engine it's not going to go anywhere no matter how beautiful it looks on the outside or in the on the inside but if the engine is not working if something is wrong with the engine then it's not going to move forward and so the same way when we think about our organization funding is what for all our program our product our services and the things that we do and the beneficiary the community that we serve and so if you don't have the funding engine figured out then it's going to cause some issues or challenges along the way but it, but you have options right you can either repair the engine or you can buy a new one and so for some of you if you're just starting your non-profit you're basically buying a new engine by learning the tools and the tips to help you to get started and get going with and and really for your non-profit and propel it forward if you've already if you already have a non-profit and you're struggling and you're self-funding or you're underfunded then that means you need to do some repair to your engine so we need to look at what is going on with your current funding stream what is going on with your current funding plan and what tweaks do we need to make an adjustment that we need to make to fix it and make it better okay so with that said um i have some thoughts to share about how you can make money welcome so the first thing is i want you to do uh, an exercise where you look back at your life like think about growing up and your childhood and even your teenage year and even now as an adult what was your thought about money what did you hear about money what was your relationship with money was money something that you loved, that you were excited about, that was easy for you to get as a family, for yourself, or within your community? Or was it a struggle? Did you have more than enough? Did you have just enough? Or you didn't even have enough to live on? Looking back and asking yourself this question is very important. Because one of the things I see in my work with champions and change makers all over the world is that sometimes our money mindset the the foundation that we have about money it, it has been correct corrupted we have some viruses that are playing over and over again in the background and because of that no matter what we do 
we are not able to really get to where we, we want. We're not at the place of abundance. A lot of us, we grew, we grew up with like money scarcity. So we have a limited money mindset when it comes to what is so possible for us, either as an individual or for our entity as well. And so and until we really confront this and we talk about it and we reflect on it, it's harder to move forward. Like you cannot produce something, you cannot put out an output when you don't have the right input. Think of it like one of the phrases that I, I love growing up, it says garbage in, garbage out. So it's what is on your inside that is going to come forth and spring forth to the out, outside as well. And so if your money mindset is corrupted with viruses that are running on the, in the background, if your money mindset is all about lack, not enough, it's not possible for you to fully fund your work or to fully have enough to live on and to thrive on, then it's going to transfer to how you run your organization and the kind of funding that you're able to get as well. And so there are steps that we need to take to make sure that we can corrupt it. We, we can correct it, not corrupt it. We move from corruption to correction so we can cor correct it as we go forward. And so after taking a review and deciding where you are, was it more? Was it just enough or less than enough? After you've done that and you've decided where you stand in all of these three categories, the next step is like, who, what things did you hear? What things solidify for you that, oh, it's not possible or that it's possible or that this is how far you can reach. This is the limit you can go when it comes to money and funding. Did you hear growing up that, oh, money does not grow on tree? Or when you ask your parent or guidance for money for things, they tell you that you like come and <laughs> make me into money or something like, oh, we don't have it. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. It's not possible. We don't have enough. And did that become your reality? Did, that, did you just accept that and believe that, well, we never had enough, so that's going to continue to be what my life trend is going to be about. And then you've now, it has now filtered into the work that you do. Because if you don't believe that it's possible for you to have more than enough, to have a budget that is fully funded, then no matter what you do, if you don't correct that foundational issue, it's not going to translate into the results that you want. And so it's very important to really, really think about, okay, what is my money mindset? What do I believe about money? Do you believe that money is the root of all evil? If you believe that, then it's harder for you to attract money to you. Are you consciously or unconsciously, intentionally or unintentionally sending money away from you? Saying money, sorry, don't come here because of what you think, what you say about money what you prophesy, what you declare in terms of your finances and what is possible for you. So it's not for people like me. People like me, it's not, we don't get this. People in my location, people with, in that, uh, in that, with this age group, it's not possible. If you say it is not possible, then it's going to be so for you as well. So we need to be very conscious of what we say, what we think when it, when we, it comes to money and how we have a relationship with it. For me, I believe that money is a tool. It's a great tool to use to be able to do good work, to use to be able to channel and fund the things that I've been called to. And I want you to think about this. You know, there are many people that use money for different things in the world. And so if you and your own purpose is about using money for good, in saving life, in changing life, in transforming community for good, why are you counting yourself out? Why do you believe that it's not possible for you to fully fund your work? It's not possible for you to have more than enough to be able to thrive and do the things that you want to do and the change you want to bring about. Who told you that you are not the right person, that you are, it's not your kind of people who can do that? And why did you believe it too? Why was it so easy for you to agree with those assessments and not challenge it as well? And so I want you to think about this because it matters. It really matters in the scheme of things. It really, really matters. And until you confront these things and you question them, they're going to keep playing in the background as viruses. And so no matter what you're doing on the externally, because your internal word, because of your thought, your thinking about money and what is possible does not 
match up with what you, the effort you, the actions you have taken you're not going to get the result yes maybe you may get something but it will not be as much as you need or as much as you want as you go forward in this process and so it's very very important that you take some time to really really look at yourself and to say okay where did i get this notion from how can i and then the next step is to now start changing because you've been brought up to think a certain way about money and this might be five years, 10 years, 20 years in the making. It's not going to automatically just go away if you just do it one time and say, okay, I'm ready to change my thoughts. Now, money, I welcome you. It's not going to happen that way. So you need to do some reconstruction. You need to do some repair. You need to do some adding and subtracting. And so it starts with what you say, your confession about yourself. And so as a believer, one of the things that has helped me on my own journey and being able to move from scarcity to abundance has always been about going back to the word of God. What does God say about me, about money? What does he promise about my life, about my purpose, about what he has called me to be? And it's all about surplus. It's all about abundance. It's all about that I can do anything. I can have everything I want. That when he actually blessed me, it's going to be good measure, pressed down and running over. He never said that my cup will be half empty. That it's like it's going to be so full that it will be running over. And so that, that, is, that means I will have more than enough. And so for me, growing up, I grew up where, where like money was always scarce. My parents were both teachers and each time is either the government was not paying their salaries. And because of that, like for four months, three months, we are always struggling and it was just never enough. And so at one point, I don't know when I, my brain just decided, you know what? I just want to have just enough. That's all I want. And I kept saying this over and over again for more than 10 years. And so I'll be praying to God for abundance. I'll be praying. I'll be working out to really progress, to move forward, to change my finances. But on the internet, what I kept saying on the verses that, the, that kept running in the background was, I just want just enough. I just want just enough. I just want just enough. And guess what? No matter what I did between those periods, I got just enough or less than enough to live on. Why? Because of what I was thinking because of what I was seeing and repeating to myself over and over again. And until I took the time to do this exercise that I told you to do, to really sit down to say, where is the root? Because if you don't tackle it at the root, things are not going to change. And so you might have good intention. Like I said, you have a great car. It looks beautiful on the outside or the inside. But if the engine, the core thing on the inside is something is wrong with it, it's not going to move. It's not going to move. It might move a little bit, then it stop. Move a little bit, then it stop. Move a little bit. And you don't want that. That is not a life of ease. That is not the kind of lifestyle that you want or desire for yourself. And so I really want to encourage you to really think about it. What have you been saying, consciously or unconsciously, about your situation, about what is possible for you when it comes to money, when it comes to wealth, when it comes to riches? And so for me, I had to be intentional about reprogramming myself, about rethinking what I thought about money and what was possible for me. So I started saying that, no, God, I am so sorry. I apologize. For over 10 years, I've been praying for just enough. And then I'm like angry or worried and tell God that I was the one who was asking for that exactly. And so my what I was saying plus my action were not matching up. And because of that, things were not going forward. So I highly encourage you to look at yourself and say, what is my money mindset? Am I operating from a place of abundance or of scarcity? Why? Who told me that this is how far I can go? Who told me that this is the limit that I can get? Who told me that I can only just have just enough, that I cannot have more than enough? Who told me that this is as far as I can go. Who told me that for people like me, this is what I, I need. I didn't know that I was being programmed because of the situation, the reality that I was going up to. And it became my life. It became what my reality became, no matter how hard I worked. And so that's why it's very important. Like I said, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't change on the inside, if you don't take the time to really, really renew your mind and start fixing and repairing those things, nothing is going to move. You just take one step forward, five step backward, one step forward, five steps, five step backward. And so I want you to really think about what you're saying to yourself, what you're thinking when it comes to your finances, when it comes to prosperity or wet. 
how do you feel about it? Do you welcome each other? Do you like sort of like say bye and you you, you intentionally or unintentionally sort of like send money away from you? And so one action step that you can take that really helped me on this journey was to start saying, you know what, money, you're my friend. You're a great tool. You're going together. We are going to use this to make a difference in the world. I welcome abundance. I welcome every good and perfect thing. You're good. You're not evil. It's the love of money. That's what the Bible says. That is the root of evil, not money itself. And so when you know that money is a tool, it's not your master. And it's a, it's a source. It's just one source, one stream for you to do good, for you to make a difference, for you to live the life of your dream, then a lot of things change for you. And so that was the first thing that I needed to correct before I could start seeing progress. I could start seeing the change that was happening for me, not just personally, but also on the, at an organization level. When I was starting my nonprofit, I had different challenges. I just had just enough. I was so funny myself. I thought that, oh, nobody was ever going to like gift my organization. And so I had to do it all by myself. But over time, after taking the time to really make these corrections and remove the corrupted files about money that I've been carrying for years, for decades, I was able to start seeing progress and change happen. So that's the first step. What do you think about money? And then the second thing is for you to renew your mind consistently. Like I said, it took 10 years plus for this virus to be planted and for me to keep playing this corrupted file. So I knew that it was not just going to be a one day, one week, two day, one year thing to get back to having the kind of mindset that is right and appropriate for where I wanted to be and where I, the relationship I want to have with money. And so I want to encourage you also to find affirmations, create your own affirmations about money and why money is good in your life, why money is great, why money is, is your partner in being able to do good, to change life, to save life, to, to, um, to, to make a difference in the world. Why is money good? Why is money good to you? And, so, and don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Like, according to the Bible, it says, ask and I will give the nations to you. Ask and I will give you anything. Like, as far as your eyes can see, you have it. And so don't ever, ever think that it's not possible. You need to renew your mind. And how you do that is to have declarations, affirmations, confession, however you like to call it. And keep repeating it over and over to yourself to say, I am possible. Money is my friend. I welcome money. I welcome it into my life. I'm a money magnet. I'm whatever it is. I'm a resource magnet. Whatever I need, I get it. I have more than enough to try to live, to go after the goals and the plans that I am meant to do on this earth and, and go forward. And so that's another, so that, that will be the next step for you to take. And then the next thing to now do is to look for opportunities to actually practice what you are now believing. Because, you know, it's harder to change from having a particular mindset for over 10 years or few years and, and then now thinking that automatically it's going to become the new normal. You have to train yourself. So if it's possible, if you have money with you, like you can look at the money and say, you know what, thank you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you. I welcome more of you into it. Speak to it. Speak to the money. Speak to what you want. Tell it that you are partners. Tell it what you're trying to accomplish. And welcome more of it into, into your life and into your being. Because if you keep doing that, I promise you, you are going to get more of that. So don't be afraid. Don't be scared of <clears throat> what is possible when you have money, when you have a lot of abundance, when you're rich and powerful. Because it's a tool. It's a tool, it's a great tool for you to use to make a difference and do so much good in the world. And so I hope that this encourages you as you go forward. And I hope that every single day you keep welcoming money because money is a great partner and can really help you go further in being able to do all the wonderful things that you want to create in this world as well. And so that's what I have for you for today. If you have specific questions or comments, please feel free to leave it in the chat or send us a DM. Will respond to you within 24 to 48 hours also i have a free master class that is coming up on april 5th that's on tuesday by 12 30 central time which will also be 6 30 west african time and i would love for you to attend so go to the link in the bio and click on it and come join us as we learn a lot about how to definitely fully fund your budget and help you to 
always, always have more than enough that you need to be able to carry out the purpose and the plans and what you believe you are called to do in this world and to make a difference in the life of so many people because the world need you rich. That is just the truth of the matter. You need to be rich. You need to be able to have a st the strategy and the tactics to be able to fully fund your budget so that you can do more good and make a difference in the world. So many people need you. So many communities need you. And so you cannot count yourself out. So come to the masterclass and let's show you how to do that and definitely um, create and get you on the path of abundance and more than enough to thrive and to do the good that you want to do. Also, if you need help with any other thing, whether it's grant writing, strategic planning, your team, training your team, your board members, I can help you with that as well. So reach out, don't be shy, and let's talk. And we are happy to definitely help you. Thank you for today. I hope you have a great day and keep doing good. I'll see you tomorrow.